The RCMP are at it again. They're making paperwork criminals out of thousands upon thousands of Canadians. Is it tens of thousands? Hundreds of thousands? Truth is, I don't know. But the guy at the CSSA, one of Canada's largest firearms organizations, might know. Tony Bernardo, executive director of the CSSA, joins me now. Tony, we're talking about an issue of the RCMP changing a magazine. It's the Ruger 1022 magazine and taking it from non-restricted to prohibited. Am I right on that? That is correct. Okay, so explain to people, especially those that not in the firearms community, uh, why this matters and, and, and what, the, what, what actually happened. Tell us about this magazine, how widely used it is, and what the RCMP have done. Okay, so first of all, let's let's establish what we're talking about. The firearms were first imported in 1964 and continuously ever since. It is the most popular 22 rifle in the world. Wow. Magaz these magazines started coming in 35 years ago approximately. According to the importer records in Canada, they have sold 1.25 million magazines. And I'm guessing that most of those are still in use. Some of them will have broken, some of them will have been thrown out, but there's an awful lot sure. of those still in use. Absolutely. I, I, I would think that, that at least a million of them would still be in use in various places. Now, in terms of the total uh, sales of the firearm itself, we're, we're dealing well into the hundreds and hundreds of thousands. The, this is the most common twenty two rifle in the world, and I would hazard a guess that at least half to one-third of all Canadian gun owners have one of these rifles. Now, They're very, very common. The, uh, the call for greater gun control, be it restricting magazines or firearms, is always in the name of public safety. Do you have records of this particular firearm being used to commit crime on a regular basis? No, as a matter of fact, I, I don't know of any in, uh, time that this firearm has been used to commit a crime. I'm sure it's happened, given the fact that it's so common. But quite frankly, but people aren't holding this is up not... corner stores with no. in gas stations with this thing. No, not at all. Not at all. This is a a 22 rifle. It's it's used for small game hunting. It's used for uh, informal target shooting, things like that. So the RCMP have decided that the magazine for one of the the most popular 22 in the world. Uh, is suddenly too dangerous for Canadians to have, even though for most of my life, Canadians have been using this very same magazine. Why? Well, the reason being is that uh, approximately eight years ago, uh, the Ruger company introduced a pistol, and the pistol was designed around the magazine. Now, that's an important distinction that we have to make. The pistol was designed for the magazine, what the RCMP is claiming is that the magazine is now designed and manufactured for the pistol. The exact opposite. In fact, these magazines were being manufactured almost 30 years before the pistol even existed. So it's very difficult to claim, especially in okay. the court of law. Why that does, that, why does that matter? Them. Why does that well, matter? Because, you see, it says in the law, in Canadian law, that rimfire magazines, first of all, are exempt from this law if they're made for a rifle. And it says in the Canadian law that the magazine is adjudicated based upon the cartridge and the firearm for which it is designed and manufactured. So That's this, very was, clear. this was designed for the rifle 35-plus years ago. Correct. The pistol is eight years old. Correct. How does the RCMP arrive at, at this? Did they not read the law? Is this a power trip? What's going on? We don't know. Uh, what we do know is that uh, this is absolutely ludicrous. These things have been sold legally in Canada for 35 years. There's no way on earth these things should be prohibited in any stretch. They're a 22 rimfire rifle magazine. That's it. So... The, due to the directive, nothing's changed in the law, nothing's passed by Parliament, no. but due to the, the directive issued by the RCMP, if I own one of these things, am I now a criminal? And and if so, and I'm and I'm caught with one, what could happen? It, well, it, it's it's hard to say, okay, because you see, the opinion of the RCMP is nothing more than that; it's their own ridiculous opinion. It would be tested when it went into court. 
Now, what the RCMP has done is they've sent a communique out to every law enforcement agency in Canada, advising them that these magazines are now considered to be prohibited weapons, and people should have them seized, and they should be charged if encountered. Unreal. So what kind of charge would you be facing? What kind of jail time for owning something that, let's say I... Let's say I'm an older guy and I bought this when it first came out 35 years ago. Uh, what kind of charge am I facing for owning something that I've had for 35 years with no incident? Possession of a prohibited weapon is up to 10 years in jail. <sighs> Unreal. This is, uh, this is why I got involved in the firearms issue, Tony. Uh, as you recall, several years ago when they started banning rifles like, like the Army Jaeger, I think that was the first one I jumped on saying... Right. Hold on, this is an issue of fundamental justice. These are these are lawful possessions that people have had that are about to be seized, they're about to be made criminals for no real reason. There's no public safety issue at play here. And the RCMP lab rats just come up with this decision on their own. I mean, was there any public consultation? Was there any incident that they point to that says, this is why we need to make the change to protect the Canadian people? No, they're not uh, obliged to make any kind of public consultation. And they would tell you that they didn't change the law. They changed the determination on a particular magazine. And I stress one more time, this is only their opinion. However, they've issued this out to law enforcement agencies across Canada, and you can bet they will be acting on it, and people will face criminal charges. Well, if people do face criminal charges, we'll do what we can to raise money for the defense fund and uh, and mount a challenge because this can't be allowed to stand. And unfortunately, given the, the current government stand on Bill C-42, this was the common sense firearms law that allowed politicians to override ridiculous decisions like this. I don't see them changing it. Sure. I don't see them telling the RCMP to back down. No, they've already made in their campaign promise uh, a decision that they will allow the RCMP to make up firearms laws. It's right in the Liberals' mm -hmm. campaign promises. That Now, our association is doing something about it. We're not sitting there waiting for stuff to happen. Uh, we have uh, are in the process, I should say, of launching a legal action against the RCMP with our industry partners. Um, by the time this uh, this video airs, uh, we will have launched this and the press releases will have gone out and we'll, of course we'll send one to you and uh, make sure you're informed of it. Uh, but we will be doing a Canada-wide court action on this issue. Uh, well, good. Somebody has to challenge it and I'm glad to, that you are part of that, as you say, with your industry partners. Uh, all the yes. best in that, Tony, and thanks for the time today. Always a pleasure, Brian. Thank you for your interest in this issue. Thanks for watching. Click here to never miss a Rebel update. Want even more of the Rebel? Well, click here to become a premium member.